it's not just about the leader. Just changing the leader is not yeah. enough. It's a fundamental breakdown of trust between Conservative voters and the Conservative Party. And this is way worse. Than, I mean, you know, 1997 was bad for them. This is much, much worse yeah, yeah, than yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, 1997 was, was obviously, New Labour were very clever with their pitch and the way they did things. Yeah. But it was, you know, we've lost faith in, we've lost faith in the Conservative Party for now. Yeah. Right? What I've been getting for six months on LBC is people saying, I'll never vote for them again as long as I live. It's a very yeah, different, yeah, yeah. we're in a very different yeah, place. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean it can't be turned around, but I, I just, you know, one half of the party hates the other half of the party. Yeah. Uh, they treat their own grassroots with contempt. Yeah. They, they still treat Brexiteers as if they're, you know, the lower orders, basically. And I just think it would take, it's going to take somebody of astonishing courage and vision to turn the Conservative Party. Well, I was going to ask you that. If you were a Conservative Party strategist, Mm. And you wanted to choose the candidate that would completely ruin your, you know, stop yeah, your yeah. tracks. Yeah, yeah. Who would that be? What a great question, to which I don't know the answer. Yeah. I don't know the answer. I mean, look, even the people, you know, that I want to believe in, and I'm obviously talking about Esther McVeigh, talking about Boris, talking about Rob, yeah. they all, on the third time of asking, yeah. back this appalling new European treaty, yeah. despite having told us it would be vassalage and a disaster. But if they hadn't got the courage yeah. to stick to their opinions then, how are they going to have the courage to deal with Barnier, Juncker and the gang in the run-up to the 31st of October? I've got a theory on this, which is that politicians in Westminster are obsessed with political process. What's gone before, you know, it's all about, about yeah. procedure. I don't think the public is any mood for that anymore. That you, we can't do this because complicated reasons that you proles don't understand. Yeah. And I think maybe you're taking advantage of that. I mean, a good way. Well, I, I'd about taking advantage of, and I'm just. I mean, look, you've got to remember. You know, I basically got out of politics. I was seeing yeah. out my time. I was trying to build a new career in the media. Yeah. Um, I've, I've only come back into this because they have dropped the ball. They failed yeah, yeah. to deliver. So I don't think I'm taking advantage of anything. I'm just doing what I believe to be right. Yeah. And, and clearly a large number of people now believe to be right. Yeah. Look, the, the only way this can be dealt with, the only way this can be dealt with is you need a conservative leader who says, we are leaving on the 31st yeah. of October. End of. You can whistle Dixie to sure. 39 billion. But if you want to come and talk to us about a free trade deal, the doors open. But that's the only way you can do it. But to do that, you know, they would they, they would have to risk being brought down by the House of Commons yeah. and having a general election. Yeah. Now, you know, uh, Jeremy Hunt this week said the Conservative Party would be annihilated if it fought a general election on a WTA Brexit. Now, I don't know where... I don't know what planet he's on. Uh, we've just had a, quite a big score at a European election on pretty much that platform. Yeah. Um, I, I think the Conservative Party will be annihilated if we don't leave on the 31st of October with anything like a Brexit that people can recognise as being what they voted for. So I think, really, uh, they've got five months. And if they don't deliver this in five months, they will be obliterated. And I mean that. Yeah. And thereafter, I was really pleased to see that you define yourselves as a classical liberal party. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we want, I mean, freedom of speech is clearly a very important part yeah. of what we do. Uh, you know, the choice of the individual, respecting the fact that other people have different points of view. Yeah. And I think the sort of coalition of people we put together to fight the European election was quite remarkable. Yeah. You know, across the political spectrum. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think classical liberalism is about respecting other people and their rights to, to live their life and, and, and hold their views. We know the last person, the last Prime Minister to, to achieve that, to unite the kind of working class strivers and the aspirational middle classes. With Margaret? Yeah. yeah. I mean, originally that was, that was what inspired you in politics, wasn't it? I joined the Conservative Party in 1978 yeah. after Keith Joseph had come to my school, yeah. spoken at lunchtime uh, in our hall, and he laid out the doctrine that we later came to know was Thatcherism, and it was about dealing with a hopelessly out-of-date United Kingdom that wasn't working anymore, yeah. and I bought into that. And, and I, I thought when I was young that yeah. I was a conservative. I wasn't. It was that particular. It was that particular. You were like you were radical, like Margaret yeah, Thatcher. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The country needed to be changed. It had to be modernised. Yeah. It was a very heavy price in part of the country to pay. Yeah. But that was the way that it was, and it did actually work. Um, so, I, so I, I now look at the long historical sweep and think there are very, very few of the last 200 years in which I would have been in the Conservative Party, to be honest with you. Absolutely right. You know, that's how I feel about Macmillan, it. Macmillan, Heath, you know, they oh. weren't 
they just weren't. Well, well, maybe they're the true conservatives. Maybe David Cameron's a true conservative. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe Theresa May's a true conservative, and people like Thatcher are the aberration. Well, that's this the way. Is, that's the way that I. That's the way that I view it now. Um, you know, it really is. Look, I think. I think that. Um, I think that in terms of aspiration, I mean, you, you mentioned that word a moment yeah. ago. So that's really interesting. You know, we've got 5.4 million people now, growing number every year. People in this country running their own businesses. Everything from somebody in the bedroom who's just set up as a computer programmer to, you know, a guy employing three people running a local yeah. carpentry business or whatever it is. Um, and these 5.4 million provide two-thirds of the jobs in the private sector, pay shed loads of tax. Nobody in government even understands who these people are. Yeah. All we do as part of the European single market uh, is just pile regulation upon regulation on them. And I, and I just think the way we deal with Brexit, for people like that, for argument's sake, is we start to present Brexit as being a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. And, you know, I think when um, Nick Timothy said that Theresa May from the start had viewed Brexit as a damage and imitation exercise, yeah, yeah. I think that really in many ways summed up her premiership very, very well. There's a great opportunity here. Uh, look, I, I think that unless the Conservative Party sorts itself out, I, th I think the Brexit Party will have a good go at replacing them. We might not get there, we might get there, I don't know, but we will try. And the green thing, you've got Michael Gove, worshipping Greta Thunberg, quite a few of the Tory <coughs> yeah. candidates are doing this. Yeah. Now I personally think that, that the uh, green measures are damaging the economy uh, and, and, and that well, countryside. Well, there's no question. I mean, a Mike, our candidate here in this by-election, fought against a big solar farm Right. You know, in this constituency, so talk to him about that. Look, I think there are environmental issues that are very, very real. You know, air quality in London is very, very real. One of the reasons the Green Party did as well as it did yeah. in the European elections is not because it's a Remainer party, but because people are genuinely concerned about issues like air quality. And I think you can deal with things like air quality, you can deal with things like excessive plastic NRCs. These are sensible pieces right. of environmentalism. What's always concerned me uh, is, is, is having, is, is having uh, CO2 uh, as this great evil and effectively forcing everybody that's poor in Britain to pay 20% more for their, for their electricity bills. Well, yeah. Uh, and so, so I think there is a, I, I think there are some practical, sensible environmental things that we can do. Um, but at the moment, uh, what I see with our chemical plants, with our uh, refining, uh, uh, with steel making, is I just see all this business leaving the United Kingdom. All of those processes, yeah, yeah. all of those processes taking place somewhere else like India under lower environmental standards. None of this is actually helping the world. Donald Trump, love. Are you, are you having dinner with him, by the way? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, he, he has hinted. He loves you. We get on well. We get, you know, we get on really, really well. And whenever I meet him, we have a very jolly time. So he's he's kind of semi-endorsed both you and Boris Johnson, and uh, he, he's he's given you love. <coughs> yeah. So if you had to, to appeal to his heart and explain why it should be you rather than Boris, what what would your message to well, the Donald? Well, 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 at this moment in time, the Conservative Party pick him the next Prime Minister. Yeah. I'm not part of that contest. Sure. So, 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 so they are two very okay. different things. You know, I think uh, I think he sees me as a. He sees me as a campaigner for Brexit, he sees me as a campaigner for the nation state and not these awful supranational structures run by horrible yeah. bureaucrats. Uh, and of course, don't forget, I did actually help him in the American campaign. Well, you did a bit. Yeah, in uh, fact, uh, he, borrowed, he borrowed his technique from you and now you're, he's giving it you back. In well, a way. that's fine. That's great. Um, that's great. I think he's doing a great job. I think he, he is a man who made a whole series of promises in the run-up to that, to that November 16 election. And you know what? He's keeping his promises. In this country, the Labour Conservative parties produce things they call manifestos without even having the intention of carrying out yeah, yeah. what they've told the electorate. And the contrast between those two things is quite remarkable. I've seen you go through so much shit in your... You, you, you really have I taken know. some you flat. Your, your family's been yeah. harassed when you've been out in pubs. Yeah. You've been, and you, and you're, for the left, you're a real hate figure and they're mm. really horrible to you. Mm. Do you kind of, is it, are you feeling quite, quite good right now? <laughs> quite vindicated? <laughs> Not yet. But when we leave the European Union, yeah. and we do so, uh, you know, in, in a way that we're free of the customs union, yeah. the single market, and we can get on with the rest of our lives, that's the day I'll feel vindicated. <laughs>